How many posts have a website? How many posts cannot afford to have a website? I'm going to show you how to have a free website and communicate with your members. MyLegion.org is a secure, free internet. It gives you access to your database, to publications. Uh, it's a communications tool. This is free and secure from the national organization. Some of the features are, are there. You can track your members of your posts and your squadrons. You can change their information, their telephone numbers, their address. You can update your deceased members. Uh, you can generate rosters of your current members, deceased members. You can also search the Department 345 or the headquarters post and expired members in your area. And as we go through this today, I'll show you how. You can also submit your consolidated post report electronically. No more writing out, nice, neat. The other features is getting connected with your members, getting your message out to them for no cost. You can download all the brochures that the national organization puts out at mylegion.org, not just the commander, not just the adjutant, but any member that signed up. You can get speeches there. You can get the new electronic dispatch that National puts out every two weeks. Simply go to either thelegion.org and at the top of their page, click on My Legion, or go to txlegion.org and click on the mylegion.org icon. It will take you to this page. This is fairly simple. You either sign in as a member, which we all can do. If you're a post adjunct or commander, it already has access. You go to the post access page and click on district commanders you use the district members when you go on this is what you will see this is some of the things you can do you can view the announcements of your post whether they do it daily weekly bi-weekly monthly you can see their calendar their newsletters if they put one on you can renew your dues online here for your post if you can't get into the see the adjunct you can simply go online and renew your dues now you can find information about Legion programs, VA assistance, who's, who's your service officer and which one's the closest to you because you need help. You can go on there and they'll show you how to get there, how to contact them. This is the email, this is where you log in with your email, the password that you create. This is, the, this is for all members. It brings you to this page. And on this page is where you see your post announcement over on the far right hand side. Like, it's time to renew your dues. We have a fish fry on Friday, come on out. The, the website, there's a link to the website, there's a link, link to their newsletter that they upload, so you just click right there and get it. So it's no more 45 cents, and actually uh, January something is 46 cents now. So the post office just went up another penny. Uh, you can put it up there for free. Members can retrieve it for free. You can see the information about the department, who the current department commander is, who the department adjutant is, where, how to get to our website if you don't know how. Our newsletter, our calendar of events is there. Same thing with the national. Now if you look on the left hand slot side of that, where underneath the picture, this is where you use the social media side, I call it, like the Facebook. You find friends. You can update your individual record, your mailing address, your telephone number, your email address. If any of that's changed, you don't have to run your agent you can change it right here and in, 70, in 48 hours it'll change the post and the departments and update all of us. So those of you that have bad email addresses, bad addresses or telephone numbers in the blue book, post commanders and adjutant, you need to go in here and change it. This is where the information comes from that we pull for that book comes from mylegion.org. So you have to make sure it's up to date or go to your, go to your post to adjutant and he can help you do it too. And you can, at the bottom, it's not on here, you can go down and follow the national commander and his Facebook page and all his trips that he goes everywhere. Now, how many posts are signed up for mylegion.org? That's out of 500, we have 202 right now. So there's still a lot of posts that need to sign up. What you do is you go to the bottom of that page, click on the auth uh, authorization form, you fill it out, you fax it in the national, They'll send a reply to me, uh, request to me saying John Doe, Post Commander 123, wants to access to it. 
and I'll verify that John Doe is the commander of that, and they'll give you the permission to access that database. The password changes every six months. You have to change it uh, for security purposes. Right now, only ones that get access is the post commander and the post adjutant. They're, they share the password. Uh, they both understand that they're responsible for that data. If they print it and give it to a vendor, they can be held legally responsible for selling secure uh, information about their members. Once it's uh, approved, then again, they'll have access for a whole year or until the next change of elections. If the commander or adjutant resigns, uh, goes to the post everlasting or whatever, the post needs to let them know so we can change the information and the contact information. Once you have your post login, you'll go to the offers login, enter the login code that National give you. There'll be a temporary password that you have to change right away. You enter that and it brings you to this page which has a bulletin board in the middle and I'm going to talk about the different areas on the left hand side. But across the top you'll see the Legion database, the Sons of the American Legion database, the downloads, how to contact National and other things. Now my handout that's in the, that you picked up today is very detailed, has a lot more information. I'm going to cover some of the highlights today and again I will be outside to answer any questions you have or any issues you have with MyLegion.org on how to get there. Some of the things we're going to talk about under the Legion database is on the left hand side the first one is membership. You, know, you can look up a list of your members, you can look them up by their name or their ID number if you need to search. John comes in and, and wants to change his address because he doesn't have a computer at home and can't remember his ID number, you just put John's last name in, his first name, and it'll pull him up. And you go in and you can edit his information. You can look and see if members have renewed online since they paid their dues. Each post can do this and, and track it. You don't have to wait every two weeks for us to tell you. You can do it every day, every week, every month. It's up to you. Uh, many of the adjutants are using this feature almost on a daily basis. Uh, we do it in our posts so we know who's renewed so we stay up to date. And I'll cover that more in a little bit more detail. So you can also do your consolidated post report here. And you can see who, what members of your post are registered to help promote this to get them to sign up. This is what the list looks like. Uh, if you're doing an all members list, you click on the member's ID number and it'll take you to their individual records. The key thing on this one you need to look at is the far right hand column. It says undeliverable. If there's a U next to their name, means their address is bad. It means they sent national mail, two pieces of mail to them, whatever, magazine or renewal notices, and they came back. They automatically mark them un undeliverable. So it means they get no magazine, they get no renewal notices, and if it's a paid up for life member, you get no money. National will not cut you a check or, or us a check for that member until we have a valid address. Their address may be correct. You still have to turn in a member data form. It's one of the few things you need a member data form for anymore is transfers of membership and undeliverable paid up for life members and regular members actually. So anybody that's got an undeliverable address and it's still good, you still have to do a member data form to get it changed. That's the, two, that's the only two reasons you need a member data form for anymore. Everything else can be done through mylegion.org. Okay, so you would click on the edit button once you find that member. Then you can go in and enter the fields of whatever you need to change. Say, as you go through it, uh, you're, you're missing the warriors, which we use to track our members based upon our percentage, based upon their warriors. We like to know how many World War II veterans we have, how many Korean War veterans, and so on. Uh, a lot of adjutants don't cap capture this on their new members or don't fill it out on the three-part card when they send it to national. So now we can get them to hopefully start updating that. It's crucial. Uh, we want to know where, what era our members served under for many reasons. Uh, but what you do is whenever field you need to correct, you correct them. If it's more than one, fine. You correct them all and at the very bottom hit correction or edit. And it'll submit it to national and within 24 hours to 48 hours, on the weekend it's like 48 hours, the computer uh, will regenerate itself at because it nationals run kicks off at midnight or one o'clock in the morning and runs to about three or four in the morning so that's that 24 to 48 hour period you can go back in two days later and check and make sure it's done we get our up uh, once a week we, on Fridays we get our weekly upload 
and we load it up into our database system, so we're usually up to date every week. But that's, that's how it works. Uh, members that renewed online is the next key feature. Again, this is big since last year. We have done a lot of pushing for members to renew online. We've had a lot of members renew online. Last year we had over 1,600 members in the department, which is not a lot, but we were one of the highest departments. Uh, this, this year alone already we're, we're close to 1,300 people, and we're not even halfway through the year. Most of them will start to renew after the holidays because the holidays, the membership is fixing to expire on December 31st. For those of you who don't know it, your membership expires December 31st. If you have a post that has a club room, that member is not entitled, he's a guest on January 1 if he has not renewed his membership. How the online renewal works is the member goes to either mylegion.org or legion.org slash renewal. Uh, pays their dues, submits it online with a credit card, they'll get a receipt, they'll get a temporary membership card, and they'll get a thank you letter. And in two weeks later, we will get a updated list of those members in the check. As soon as we get that list from National, we input them into your membership report so they get into your account right away. And once a month, we get checks from National and we send them down to you guys. This is what the member will receive. Again, it's got the information on the top, the thank you letter from the national adjutant, uh, his temporary membership card, and a receipt to take into the post because he can go in and get his, his permanent card. The temporary card just says renewed online. It's just as good as any other card that the one you have. It's just as good as your paid up for life card. But if the member wants that other card, he just brings you the receipt, or you go online and verify that he is renewed online. You give him his card. For post adjutants, you simply give him his member card, you take portions one and two, and you destroy it. You do not send them in, you destroy them. Shred it, burn it, rip it up into small pieces, but destroy it. Because we do not want to double count that member when you send them in to us. Renewals online, uh, again, you re receive a, we receive a list on the 16th and the 1st of each month for the previous month. We'll, get, we'll add that to your account for membership, the renewed online. Uh, and then again, once a month we give you a credit. Uh, once a month we send you a check. We also send you a letter saying how much your credit is so you can use towards your next transmittal. If your credit gets very large in a quarter, we will send you a check for it. Uh, some posts request it because they need the money, which we can do. Normally, about every quarter, uh, every six months we've been trying to send, and at the end of the year we send you a check. Uh, we ask that you help monitor that. If it gets up to where you really need the money, give us, give us a holler or send me an email and we'll get you a check cut right away. We had a post that had $1,500 on a credit. They doubled their member, a lot of their members, the adjutant went online and renewed all of the members of the post with a post credit card, then turned around and submitted a transmittal with a check for the same members. Yeah, I ain't quite figured out how you did that one yet. So that feature has gone away where a post adjutant can actually renew online. But it's a great tool. So when you, when you go into the renew online, this will be the first block you see. You inset a date, you put in a date range, whatever date range you choose, it'll give you this list. From that list, you can create a PDF list. So you can print it down and put it in your file and keep it. Some of your auditors want to see that. Uh, our auditor does. We, every report we get gets, goes into a special file. Our auditors uh, bounce that at the end of the year during the audit against our membership records. It's also going to be available in a CV, CSV file, which you can export to Excel and then uh, manipulate how you want. Uh, consolidated post report. You have three ways each year to submit the consolidated post report. The consolidated post report is the most important form you can fill out for many reasons. One, it tells the national, it tells the department, but national takes that information from all 14,000 posts, consolidates it and takes it to Congress to show, one, what we do as a, a nonprofit organization, why we should be a nonprofit organization for our tax status every year to the IRS. We take it here in Texas, and, and starting January, when we walk, start lobbying for veterans' benefits and stuff that we need to help our veterans, 
we can use that information to show what we as an organization do. Uh, and we do it every two years when we have. Also, you can do the same thing in your community. You can print that down and go to your mayor and say, Mr. Mayor, this is what we do in your community. Here's all the money we give in scholarships. How many, who gives scholarships? Everybody, mostly. How many of your cities know and your schools know that you even give a scholarship other than every other year or that year when that one little one child gets it, when Johnny gets it? Most of your people don't. Our post, we do a fundraiser every year to raise money for scholarships. We go out, we raise the money, and people attending the breakfast are our own members. We put it out in the paper one year that what we were doing, and we ran out of food three times. When the community found out we were giving the money back to the little Johnny, the little Sammy in our community, they came out and helped us. And that's a key thing to remember. So what you do is you open up the report. There's six, er seven areas. Each has an edit button. You click on the edit button and it opens up and then you insert the data. Some of it may apply, some of it may not apply to your post. What does? Submit. What doesn't? Don't worry about. Leave it blank. You go through all seven areas and when you get very, all the way to the end, you'll see that red circle up there. It doesn't turn red in there, but it says generate your report. What it does is it generates a copy to you. It also submits it to National, who submits it to us within 24 hours of you submitting it. Actually, it takes 15 minutes, usually from the time you hit send to it gets to me. And it gets, because I get, get it, as soon as National receives it, they forward it to me. I test it every couple months. I do 345 just to make sure it's working. This consolidated post report is open from January through July. Uh, one of the features we're working, we've suggested that they do, is create this so that you can put the data in and save and hold. So each month your agent can go in and add it up as you go along instead of sitting back and trying to remember through the whole year who did what or calling your, your chairman to say how much money, how much hours did you do. Some posts wait to the end of the year. In our posts, we do it every month. Our agent asks you what did you do, you know, how many hours you spent, how much money, and we t tallies it and then we put it into the system. Or I should say I put it in the system because he will not use a computer. I'm working on it slowly. I know he knows now how to turn it on and how to log in. <laughs> Let me ask, that is a big step. It only took six months. By the end of the year, he will know how to use that computer. So when you hit generate, it goes to national. You get a copy for your files. It goes to every member of your post if they're logged into My Legion, so they can do the same thing. If they're going to go up to, say they're going to come to Capitol Hill to talk about a veteran's Thing and they want some information about what you did, you can, they can go to their page and print your consolidated post report and have documentation to show what you did. That's why it's crucial that it's accurate. Other tools that are available, this is where you would post your post message each week, each day, however you want to do what, what you want to put up. You simply go in, you click on the tab, put your message in, hit, the, hit uh, display, and it puts it into their individual pages. Uh, you can also do your image. You can put an image of your post. You can put the Legion. The Legion logos are all up there if you just want to use those. Your calendar, your newsletter, all that kind of stuff goes through there. The last two I'm going to talk about is find members in my area, and I will cover that. And the last one, how to grow my post, you're going to hear about tomorrow from Fred Rogers. But this is a tool you can also use to grow your membership. If you go into the click on find members in my area, this is what comes up. It's got your basic post information. You insert a zip code and miles. So you take your zip code of your post or your house, however you want to do it, you input that, put miles. Five to 50, I think is what it does. And then you hit uh, start. You hit that little button. It'll generate a list of all those members that are in that area that are at 345, or expired members. Some of them may be current, but it'll give you anybody that lives in that area, not just from any post. Because I know when I did it in mine in Round Rock, we got people from post 83 and post 76 that live in Round Rock but belong to their post. You can then take this roster, which looks like this, and generate the PDF version or the CSV and put it in Excel format. And if you have a really good person that's high skilled with computers, 
you can sort this in any way you want. You can, if it's, if they have the member has their zip four plus in there, you can sort it by zip four plus and have your routes made up. If you go to Office Depot, Office Max, Staples, you can buy Ram McNally uh, Road and Atlas, it's $35. You can take that list, import it into that, and it'll create a map for you. If you go for the big one, which is uh, Map Pro, you can, it's 300 some, you can actually take that information, load it up into your GPS's, and go, and it'll take you right to that member's house. And it'll do it where it will take, you can take a block, say there's, you want, you want this neighborhood, and I'm gonna send Walter in this neighborhood, you circle it until go, and it'll make a path to each member's house. It's a great tool, we use it a lot when we do our membership revitalization efforts. Uh, we did it in Houston a couple years ago, works great. It's expensive, it's like $3.99 for a post, but the $35 version will do the, almost the same thing, it just won't give you the map. Or it'll give you the map, it won't do the GPS for you. But with the map, you can go, here, remember, here's how you get there, here's where he lives. So that excuse is, oh, I don't know, I don't know where that street is, here's a map. It shows a little dot where he lives. You just go, give him the list, and away he goes. This is the CSV file. This, again, in Excel. You can manipulate this any way you want. You can sort it by alpha, by street, zip, warrior, last year paid, post, however you want. If you're good with Excel, you can do a lot with it. Uh, and again, this is what we use all the time to do a lot of our membership rev revitalization efforts. Uh, some of the stuff we're doing now, find expired and 345 members. You can go in here and find the 345 members in your area and get them to transfer. Contact them and get them to transfer in your post so they're active members in the Legion. Materials. This is where you can find all the officer's manuals, your, uh, your post commander's guide, post adjutant's guide, post operations manuals, uh, why you should belong, all that kind of stuff is now on here. Uh, it'll be here for a while, it'll be here because eventually what we send out to you is going to get uh, less and less. Most of you agents already know there's less brochures coming each year. Uh, more and more of it's being added to online and more and more is being not duplicated by national. Uh, so, but this is a key area, especially if you have officers, uh, like the commander was talking about in his thing, and you want to teach them their job, go in there, you can download it into a PDF and just print their portion and give it to them and say, here's your duties and responsibilities. This is what you're going to do during the meeting. So you don't have to go out and buy new manuals. You can just pull it down for free and do it for them. Speeches are up there. You can go in there under speeches and, and get the current speeches for Memorial Day, Veterans Day. You know, Fourth of July, Legion birthday, if you've got to give a speech, great tool. You just, you might want to edit it because they're usually pretty long. Or if you're like me, I go in and it's small font and I make it big font so I can read it. Because I do wear glasses and as I get older, it's, I can hardly read this. I already have those. So there's, this is different speeches you can get. The next one is forums. This is a great tool because a lot of people don't know about it. It's called Topics and Discussion. So if you wanted to find out a question on how do you start a effective baseball program in my post, you can go on here and type that question in and you can start a group discussion with anybody from California to New York City, all over the world. If there's a question, if not, you may get somebody replies to your question. How do I go about starting an effective baseball program? And I've used it for a couple different things, and it's a really great tool. Uh, I've reached out to Legionnaires all, all around the world through it. It's, uh, and the district commanders will have that too. Anybody can use it under the member page too. Uh, they got a little bit different topics. Uh, under the Suns, again, you get the same data that they have or you have. The Legion controls it. You can share their information, print them rosters. You just cannot give them access to it. Under the downloads button, you get your membership reports and files. This is your online renewal members, uh, your different rosters. You can get your uh, current members, expired members, your deceased members. So it's, it's now May, and then uh, tomorrow you're going to your district convention and your district commander is going to want one thing from you, your deceased members list. So you just go in here, enter the dates, print it down, 
and you can go in and he goes, Mr. District Commander, here's my deceased members for the chaplain. And he goes on to do the memorial service and you're done. You don't have to sit there and scratch your head anymore and figure out who passed away since when. It's right there for you. You can also get a current listing and use it in, uh, X, in the Excel format if you want of your legion and your sons. You can also on the bottom is where you would find your online renewal members, your each two weeks report. Say you time for your annual audit and you can't find one of the reports, they're going to stay up here for two years. So you can go back and pull that down if your auditor wants to see that and match it up. District features, I'm just going to kind of cover this real quick so you know what your district commander can see. Uh, basically, they can find members in your posts by their name or their ID number. They cannot make any changes to your, your, your members. They have look only. Uh, they can look up expired members and headquarters member in your area just like you can. So if they're going to come into an area or to a post to help do a revitalization project, they can get the same information. They can also track their posts, CPR reports. They can download the CPR report for your post, for their post in their district. So when they're getting closer to that June 1st deadline, the district commanders can now go online and look at it in their web portal and see who has and who hasn't and get on the phone and start remembering, hey, you're down to one day, you're down to a week, whatever. But district commanders, this is a key tool for you to help us get 100% CPR reports. Uh, they can get posts and district manuals, and again, they have the officers for them to use themselves. Post inquiry will give them information on your post, how to contact you. So if your telephone number has changed since the blue book was printed, you update it, this is where they can go to get the, the current version. This is what their consolidated post page looks like. It shows all the posts in their district. They can hit the generate button and create a report for their files. Again, they can also do the find members in my area. Now they can go in and say, okay, I live in, where's a good post? Lampasas, Texas. Or we don't have a post in Lampasas and it's in my district. The 11th district commander, I know he's out here somewhere, can go in and put that zip code in, do a search and get all the names of all the people in the Department of Texas that live in that area, 345 is expired, and go start them a new post. It's that simple. And you just got to get the bodies to help you pound on doors, make phone calls, whatever it takes. We can mail letters to them with the district commander's help. There's a lot of tools and a lot of things we can do to get members to join this organization. You know, this is what, this is 2012, we're fixing it 2013, we're only I'm drawing a blank. Five, six years away from my 100th anniversary. What's the goal of the national organization and should be our goal for that 100th year? Be three million members or more. We need your help to get there. We would love to hit our new all-time high of 136,000 members. It's very easy to do. We just got to get our members to renew. That's where it hurts us the most is our members not signing up new members, renewing them. And if you have any questions or any problems, you can go to mylegion.org. The post can get their uh, sign-up sheets. This is the contact information to call if you have a problem. It's right on the very front page when you log in. You call them, Libby or Pat will be there to help you. Uh, if they, you can't reach them, you can call me. I will try and help you too. But most of the time, if it's a login problem, it's because there's a change or you have it in that I can't help you with, but if you have a question on how mylegion.org works at any time, feel free to give me or my staff a call. I'll be outside to answer any questions you have. Thank you.